Is absolute honesty necessary for a healthy relationship or is it sometimes better to let some things secret or keep them hidden or just keep them to yourself? You must never be absolutely honest mm -hmm. in any relationship. Some lies are very critical for the solidarity of a relationship and the solidness of a relationship. Like, honey, you don't they're look not, fat in this they're not, all. No, they're not called lies. They're called creative adjustments. Uh, <laughs> you, know, you have to adjust a situation with a certain information, which you can term a lie. But to me, it's not a lie. It's the reality of your existence by not lying. So clever. That's yeah. I'm just going to type all of this out and that will be the sequel to no, my No, no, you can't. I always tell people, why I do you have to give this information? If you did something that was incorrect, why are you lumbering your partner with that stress? If he or she doesn't need to know this, then do not tell them. Why then lie? Say, yes, it was lovely, missed you, thought of you, did nothing, <laughs> slept early. It's okay. If it's, a, if it's a one-off thing, you went out partying, you had some flirty fun, but nothing really happened. Why do you want to give all that information that's going to make your partners think of all the things that you may have done which you didn't do? So just lie. <laughs> just lie. I do that with my mom all the time. She's the only like partnership I have right now. I'm always, she's always thinking I'm at work post 9.30 or 10 because, you know, she, she feels bad when I stay away late because she thinks my health will suffer I'm like, I was working till late and I was not doing any such thing. I lie all the time. You know, my, my mom is in the front row, so thanks very much for that. <laughs> That's okay. I mean, sometimes you have to lie to mothers because mothers, let me tell you, if you tell them the truth all the time, they will hold it against you. That's true. You lie to mothers and lovers all the time. <laughs> That's a lovely quote. Do you want to answer that as well? Or are you forgot the letting question. him win? No, I'm letting him win. <laughs> Better to uh, be honest or lie? That's the question. Uh, so there are some inconvenient truths, right? Like if uh, there are some inconvenient truths, if you say, darling, do you find me boring? And the guy says, yeah, actually, you're boring. <laughs> then, I mean, you don't want to hear that. And it's not going to, you can't go to bed on that, right? So I think there are some, some inconvenient truths that you need to mask. Emotional cheating. Physical cheating you could even do if you have a thought in your head. Is that considered physical cheating? That is also physical cheating. If you're getting erotic thoughts in your head, that's also cheating. You know, so, God, you know. Every man in this room is having so a scene with Sunny Leone really like as we speak. So <laughs> acting on it, uh, acting on that, that thought, and if it's just physical, it's, that is something that you must discuss. That's what I was talking about. Uh, Emotional cheating is a larger problem. Uh, that means there is a problem in the relationship itself. Right. If there is emotional cheating, then there's a major issue in your relationship, and that must hit you hard. Physical cheating, you don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay now to each his own. Now one can't be like entirely like sad, like, you know, pretend like, you know, like it's not happening around us and that your life is a perfect, you know, detergent, which is all clean and clear. It's not <laughs> like that. Got it. Um, I mean, firstly, to address, uh, you know, you brought up infidelity earlier. And um, I, I actually made a film on the topic yes, in 2006, yeah, course, yeah. Uh, which was 13 years ago. And I remember it was like, um, it was it had met with so many polarized responses. And it was very traumatizing for me because um, I, 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 people, I, I came out of Kabhi Khushi Kabhi Gam, which was all about loving your parents. And this was all about leaving your wife. <laughs> uh, so it was, a, it was a kind of a digression from what I had done. And um, I still remember the night uh, um, that the film had actually paid previews of and I went to IMAX Badala and I was standing there and there was a I was standing there very nervous and there was a scene where uh, you know the lead character Shah Rukh and Rani check into the hotel you know for extramarital fun and uh, uh, and uh, that was a there was a very traditional looking couple sitting in the audience and I was sitting right behind them and the wife looked very traumatized when that happened uh, and the husband just tapped her and said don't worry it's a dream sequence <laughs> and uh, and uh, when he realized that, no, this was a legit situation, it was not a dream sequence, they looked at each other angrily for some reason and then got up and left. And when I stormed out of that because I was so nervous, I saw a lady crying, like a young girl weeping by a pillar. And her mother walked up to me and I thought she's coming to give me a hug, you know, that I, because the girl was so affected by the movie or whatever. Uh, she said that, uh, you know, tumne a picture. So I said, huh. So she said, I brought my daughter out after a divorce, you know, to, to give her a good night uh, to show Karan Johar film and this is what you have made. So then I realized that actually uh, we do brush the, the phenomena of infidelity as rampant as it is around us. Like I was told you've endorsed infidelity with that film, but I'm like, you cannot endorse something that's already sold out. You know, um, it's <laughs> rampant, it's yeah. around us, you can choose to believe it or not, that's up to you. If you're going to brush it under the carpet, it's your carpet, you deal with it. Because let me tell you, everyone, 
around us is a subject of this phenomena, either in it, uh, going through it, suffering from it, recovering from it, or indulging in it. It is happening. It's or, there. Or know someone that it's happening to. Oh, sorry? Or at least oh, know Oh, definitely somebody. know someone. Yeah. How could you not yeah. know someone who's having an affair? Uh, <laughs> uh, you have to know them. And I'm not saying that it's, uh, it's the right or the wrong thing. These are human reactions. I mean, these are human emotions, and they are out there. Um, uh, when, you talk about, um, uh, when you talk about what you asked about the double standards, so there is a certain level of hypocrisy that surrounds us. Mm -hmm. And I find, if you ask me, I find that hypocrisy very high in the highest levels of society. It's very surprising. You would think that intellectuals, affluent, educated men and women would actually have a broad mind to so many things. And you'll be surprised that that's not true. You know, sometimes I wonder what they do with their degrees and what they do with all their achievements and what they do with their international achievements when they cannot accept simple facts that sometimes love doesn't come with an age, love doesn't come with a sex, love doesn't come with any criteria but love. And you've got to accept it for what it is. And I just believe that we are, a, sometimes the affluenza and the affluent society mm -hmm. can be much more hypocritical than people of lesser income um, in our land and our country. Yeah, well said, I think. Very well said. Yeah. And I loved your movie, yeah. by the way. That yeah. film, I told you even at that time. Yeah. That's the third reason I had you here. Oh, that's the third reason. <laughs> that's kink. Well, Divya, I want to say something here. I think that uh, the inherent problem is with society not wanting women in desire to be uh, hyphenated, I mean, to be used in the same uh, sentence, okay? So uh, the fact that a woman will look outside of marriage, whatever her circumstances be, it will be discouraged because it's somewhere acknowledging that she is an individual with desires. So a male, male desire is respected. You know, men get bored easily. A man wants an outlet. Come on, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the physiognomy of a man is like that. But with women, we have to actually... Well, in a sense, I feel like the sea link. Because um, I, when I grew up, I, were, I stayed in Malabar Hill for 26 years of my life. And then I moved to Bandra for the remaining 20, uh, 21 to be exact. And I just feel like I've, I, when I was in Bombay, that Bombay, that South Bombay, was a totally different world. Um, you know, than what it is today. It's much more crowded and there's much, it was much more there an old world charm about it. Yeah. You know, there, was, there were people who came from old money and had their own kind of, you know, charm and self-worth and, you know, flamboyance that was unique to them. Um, I, I see that slipping away, uh, being replaced by, you know, the modernity of things. When I moved to Bandra, you know, it was a totally different hub. It was a bunch of self-achievers of the suburbs, this part of the city, Bandra and Juhu and beyond. There was a lot of self-achievement. There was a lot of hunger to achieve. There was a lot of individuals who made it on their own steam and not from family lineage or money. So ritually across the sea link, I saw two different spectrums. I saw like, um, for the lack of a better way of saying it, the so-called nepotistic gang that were actually uh, <laughs> uh, leveraging parental wealth and status. And then there was like the single achievers who were like, who were moved in from elsewhere, you know, from other cities, moved into Bombay and were really, really trying to make it on their own. And now the Bombay that I know and where I'm at is uh, full of that, which I'm really happy about. I see kids, and I'm always surrounded by a lot of achieving millennials and Gen Z guys and girls that are really, really wanting to make a place for themselves. There is ambition, but on their own terms. And that's what I think I really love, because we've all been ambitious, but sometimes your ambition has absolutely no cap. You know, you can do, will do anything for your ambition. That's not the case with this generation, because their ambition has a boundary, you know. They will do it up to a point, and then they really want to have a good time as well. And I think they balance ambition and fun. Yeah. So the city actually is doing just that right now, balancing ambition, but also having lots of fun. And I think when we grew up, the, you know, the pressures were much higher. For some reason, because I think our parents of that generation gave us that pressure. And now the younger parents are not so pressurizing, because they don't want to be the like how their parents were to them, you know? So 